Hey y'all, so for the last couple of months, I've been urged by the Spirit to tell my testimony, but for a couple of reasons, i kind of just been putting it off. For one, I personally don't think my life is nearly as interesting as other testimonies that I've heard before. And two, I did not know where to start. As I've mentioned in at least one other video, uh, usually when I try to just move on and glide over the urge, if, if God wants me to talk about it, he won't let me forget it. My prayers have been for the last couple of months that uh, that he give me the words to say and if I do tell it that it at least affects one person's life. So here I am telling you what got me to this point. So my mother's story kind of weaves into my own because obviously she raised me. So she was taught about Jesus in her youth, but of course she went her own way until she turned about 40 years old. And at that time I was only eight years old. I personally think that's a great thing because I learned young who Jesus is. My mom made it a point to speak to me about her faith. She always told me that Jesus loves me and that he came to save me. And I really do appreciate that because she gave me that foundational base. So we went to church every Sunday from the time I was eight years old until I was like 17. And uh, I got baptized at 11 years old. But truth be told, I didn't go to church because I wanted to. I was a kid, so pretty much what my mom said went. I wasn't heavy into my scriptures every day. So for the most part, I really didn't know what God had to say about things. And once church was over, I came home and I pretty much did whatever I wanted to do. I think knowledge and faith is two different things. So for me, I knew who Jesus was. I knew he was who he said he is, but I wasn't walking like I actually believed that. This persisted for up until about two years ago. Now this part, this part makes me super uncomfortable to talk about because who really enjoys bearing all their innermost weaknesses in front of everybody, you know? At the same time that we were going to church on Sundays, I was struggling with an addiction to pornography. And this started at an extremely young age, an age that I'm a little too, too embarrassed to admit. I was like four or five years old when I started this addiction. So I don't know if anybody remembers, but before cable TV was the norm and everybody had it and all that, there used to be like fuzzy home recorded channels that you could pick up over the air. And some of those channels were X-rated. So that's basically how it got started. And then as the years progressed, the more the internet became accessible to me, I would sneak and watch it more often. I also became more interactive while watching it too, if you know what I mean. And it wasn't like I didn't know any better because for the most part, I made sure that I did it in secret and wouldn't get caught. And I, I call it an addiction because, I mean, the frequency that I would do it and for how long I did it. Like, this addiction lasted me almost 20 years. From the time I was like 4 or 5 years old until the time I was like 23. Although I did this thing routinely, it wasn't something that I particularly enjoyed. Like, I actually hated it. Like every session that I would do and, and after the fact, I would feel so guilty and like trash. I'm not the only person I know who after the fact would be like, you dirty dog, why did you even do that? And for me, it was like even further, why is this something that I keep on doing and I cannot stop? Over the course of almost 20 years, I tried so many times to go cold turkey and quit and i could not i could not do it every time was a fail and after a certain point i got so discouraged that i was wondering if it was ever a possibility that i could shake this thing that i hated but you know somewhere the hope was still there see i was one of those people who i conscientiously sinned like i knew it was wrong to do it but my mentality was like, oh, I could just repent after the fact. So after 
every mess up, I was just like, oh, God, forgive me for doing that. Don't do what I did. God deserves more than that. Even though I felt ashamed, I would still pray. And maybe like a year or two before I rededicated my life to Christ, I would actually start speaking to this addiction. And I would say things like, pornography, you're not going to cripple me for my whole life. I will be free from you in Jesus' name. And I can't say that these were like the strongest, boldest prayers. Uh, I was very discouraged. But, you know, God said all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. And I really do think that he used that for my good. So in addition to that, I drank to get drunk. I smoked weed. I was heavy into astrology and planet placements. I invited a lot of bad messages into my spirit, as well as I cursed. I said a lot of profanity. And let me say this. I can only speak from my own experience. A lot of those things, all of those things that I did was to be fulfilled in some way. Like I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be loved. So I can't really say that they did a good job because I mean, I still thought some very terrible things towards myself. I felt inadequate. I felt alone all the time. I felt like there was no purpose for me to be here on this planet. And although I felt like, what's the purpose? I was never gonna kill myself. But I for sure didn't want to be here. And to be honest, I never really spoke about this to anybody. Um, on the outside looking in, people would assume that I was okay. I didn't wear this stuff on my sleeve. But on the inside, I was like, this can't be life. I, I, I always feeling like I'm stagnated and it's an endless cycle. How long is this going to go on for? So... The reason why I can say with confidence that there's only one named Jesus who can fill a void isn't because I never tried to be fulfilled by anything else. So now fast forward to my senior year in college. This is like late November, early December of 2019. So I'm about to graduate in like the next month. This is right before the pandemic hit. And you know what? I really do think that that was a strategic thing that happened to me because imagine being at home all year 2020 with that addiction like I really do think that God got my attention right on time so anyway um this is Thanksgiving break I go to Maryland to see my aunt's new house we go through the whole trip this is like the back half of the trip everybody's preparing to go back home and I do, as usual, anywhere that I go, I'm watching YouTube. I love YouTube. That is my TV. So obviously, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what YouTube looks like. When you first get on YouTube and you're signed into your account, you have a recommended page that will usually pop videos up that they think you'll like. And that's based off of the videos that you have already watched. Around this time, I wasn't watching no christian videos or nothing like that i was watching astrology videos true crime beauty i was watching story times things like that there was one video that caught my eye because i mean usually i don't see stuff like that be recommended to me because at the time i wasn't watching stuff like that but i knew what it was it was a video of rod pickens dream that he had about judgment day for some reason, I had the desire to click on it just to be refreshed on what he said. And uh, I, I recommend that you guys go on YouTube and search that testimony up for yourself. Search Rod Pickens testimony and it should pop up. It is quite an intense testimony. After I watched it, I was feeling super convicted and my mind went to thinking like, Judgment Day is going to be here one day. So what is Jesus going to say to me on that day? So I immediately, instead of prayer, I start talking to God and I'm just like, listen, I know the way that I live is not right. Um, I do not want to hear the words depart from me, come from you. That would absolutely crush me and I need your help to do the right thing. And I said it and I meant it. 
And this time, I felt like things were going to be different. When it became apparent to me, when it became clear that things were different, was like a month after. It wasn't immediately. It was like a month after I said that prayer. I had gone a whole month. And I realized, like, I haven't had the desire to watch pornography or self-please. What's going on here? At the time that I said that prayer, I could not go longer than three days without doing it or thinking about doing it. So that's when it became clear to me that it was that prayer. That's the only thing different that I did. God delivered me. He healed me from an addiction. Here I was doing something. I had given up most hope on being able to overcome this addiction. And I'm doing it. Like, it's literally happening. So, to date, it's been almost two years. I have never watched another pornography video or self-pleased. All glory goes to Jesus Christ for that one. It wasn't my own willpower or strength. Only God. Jesus Christ has given me strength and hope beyond anything I can imagine. And I am so, so glad that he did not give up on me, though I pushed him away countless of times. He has still embraced me as his own child. The gratitude. Don't get it twisted. The walk has not been perfect. I still be messing up sometimes. But uh, the point is not to be perfect. The point is to recognize that you need God. And that I do. I know his grace and mercy allows for me to get up and try again every time. I'm learning and I will never stop learning. And I know that as long as I cling to his finished work on the cross and not my own, I know I will never die. He's refining me so that I could be a better representative of him every day. The baby, if you think you're about to be able to do this on your own strength, let me save you some time and energy. <laughs> Only he can make you righteous. So, yep, that's my story thus far. I hope this blessed you and gave you some inspiration to maybe try him and see for yourself that he is good. So, the last thing that I want to do before I end the video is lead you in a salvation prayer. If you want to get to know Jesus for yourself, don't be just doing it just to do it. Mean it in your heart. If that's you, say these words. God, I'm a sinner and I need your help. I want to know you. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me and three days later you raised him from the dead. I ask that you come into my life and show me the way. Thank you for your unconditional love, and I look forward to all the things you have in store for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. All of heaven is celebrating because you are a part of the family now. Yeah, that's really all I had to say. Um, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.